brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, City. Connor, good to chat with you again. Um, I'll start by getting your thoughts on the Grimsby game. What did you make of your size performance? Um, I think the, the main objective was obviously to win the game, uh, no matter how we did it. I think ideally we'd uh, scored more goals and, and maybe control the game in more parts, but um, I think we were just really happy to actually just get the three points. I was going to ask you about that point uh, more in depth about scoring more goals. Do, do you buy into that argument then? Was there an opportunity you felt to, to score more goals in that game? Um, it's hard to say really because... You know, you probably watch the Man City Leeds game and and see how quickly things can change. Where you know Man City have got complete control and and Leeds on the counter attack nick uh, nick the winner. So um, it, it was just really important for us in in you know what we're trying to do and going you know game by game and wanting to win as many games as possible. That we just got the job done and and we did that. Yeah, is that the most important thing at this stage of the season? We've just spoken to Nala Canavan, who pretty much echoed that sentiment that. A win is a win, no matter what, and it keeps it keeps your season alive. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, you know, shows that we didn't play well. You know, but we still won the game, and that's you know a sign of, of teams um, who were who were um, doing well, and you know we're happy to to win and not play well, rather than to play well and, and not win. So again, we just reiterate it's so important to get the three points. Did you see what Paul Hurst had to say about? you and your side after the game? Um, somebody mentioned it briefly, but um, I've not taken time to have a look, no. Um, he suggested that you maybe misled uh, your preparations in terms of how you looked to shape up, particularly defensively, um, highlighting that you were in a back three during the warm-up and then adopting a four to then change into a three. I mean, what, what do you make to those comments? Um, we, we've done it for, the, for the, a few of the last games because um, we felt that you know the players who were heading the ball most most commonly were, were those three. Um, it was obviously Pordy and Naz and, and and you know doing that screening protective role. So um, it wasn't you know to try and fall. It was more to to um, give players repetition of, of what they're going to be coming up in the game. What did you make of the incident as well at, at half time? I don't want to labour it too much, but I realise it was a big talking point to become from the game and, and I wonder whether or not it changed at all that the tempo of the game more generally. Uh, it just, you know, for us it only just changes, um, you know, how we play against 10 men uh, rather than 11 and, and where we can get the advantages. So, um, you know, when when we found out that he'd been given a red card, you know, that changed how we approached the second half. Um, yeah, and that's all, all I've got really got to say on that one. Did you celebrate the two safety? Um, didn't celebrate it, but it was it was nice to um, nice to get it over and done with. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine that was a nice moment for you both, really, given what the remit was when you first came. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, we're delighted to to have got the club into a, a stable position in in the league, and you know, again, we're just we're ambition. You know, we're ambitious. Sorry to um, to keep winning games. Again, forgive me for being sentimental. I mentioned this to Mark afterwards given that it was the Grimsby game that highlighted it to you both that you wanted it permanently. It was the Crawley game where it all started. I mean, what were your memories of that 48-hour period ahead of that night in December? Yeah, it was a, it was a whirlwind um, for me and Mark. I remember I was talking on the phone and, and, you know, we were in lockdown and, you know, quickly trying to find somewhere to go and, to go and plan. Um, but again, it's, it seems like a lifetime ago now and, um, you know, it was a whirlwind and it, it still is, but, you know, we're, we're really happy to see how things are going at the minute and, you know, we're love, loving every minute of the job and um, and we're happy to, to keep going with, with the good and the bad. I remember very clearly when the team news came through that evening that there was one very fundamental change to the setup that night and that was the formation to the four two three one. Now that I realise that there have been tweaks along the, along the way, but... Really, that has been the, the, the definitive way that you guys have, have gone about your business. To say that you had a 48-hour hour period to highlight that as a, as a change and to have stuck with it all the way through. I mean, when did you realise that, that that was the way forward? Um, we looked at, you know, what formations, you know, we've played as, uh, as managers, really, and, and coaches along the years. And, 
um, which suited the the players that we had in the building um, and at the club. So we just felt that at that moment in time, um, the system that we do play offers you stability, but it still offers you um, attacking threats depending on how you play it and and what roles you get uh, certain players to do and. You know, so far it's um, it's been good to us, but again, we we want to get even better at it. How different a Crawley side will they be tomorrow evening from the side that you faced initially in December? Um, I, I remember that game well. I, I you know I always speak really highly of Crawley. I think they're one of the best in possession teams in the league. Um, the way that they play is really impressive, and and they've got some real good ball players. Um, so again, uh, we're going to have to be at our best defensively to cope with their fluidity and their rotations and things like that. Um, they've obviously had a, a drop of form um, and obviously they, they sold uh, Waters to, to a, a championship club so um, they're, they're maybe trying different things at this moment in time and, and hoping to have a good positive end to the season. Yeah, and it's something again that came when we spoke to Niall not too long ago about how you will have to be wary of that. I mean, how much have you spoken about that point yeah, you know, uh, regarding the the way that they play, or or just the way that their seasons panned out, and yeah, you know, there is a there is a school of thought, isn't there, that they may have a bit more freedom. Potentially, um, you know, it depends how they they go about the business, whether they're looking at, um, you know, ending the season well or trying maybe new things for next season. That's entirely up to them. We we just got to um, do do our job and and to make sure we prepare as as normal. In terms of your own side, team news-wise, I'll, I'll get your thoughts on that firstly. Do you have any fresh concerns ahead of that game? Um, no, no, we don't have any from, from the last game, so which is obviously really positive. In terms of welcoming players back, I'll go through the names. and I'll start with Lee Novak, obviously someone that seems to be getting closer and closer. Where is he at now, Connor? Um, he's still with, obviously, he's with the physios, um, doing sort of work on the grass uh, when, when the, um, the, the squad who were fit are training. So, again, uh, what we're trying to, to say about it is hopefully we can get him back before the end of the season and, and that would be a real bonus because obviously Lee's a, a good player and a great character. And Levi Sutton? Levi will be back. He'll be back in, big, in contention. That's a big boost for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah obviously Levi's a, a player who's doing really well for us and you know we're delighted to welcome him back. Does he slot straight back in then, or do you give him a bit of transitional time to just get some minutes under his belt? Um, it's important that we we think what's best for Levi and and make sure when you know he's he's probably not you know put into the deep end and we and we tra- transition him back in like you said. Who misses out then once he comes back in? Is it easy to think that Finn just drops out and Anthony goes back to right back, or is? Is that just too easy for me to say? It's not really a dis- um, decision that's been made as of yet. As you know, we're, we're performance related uh, generally, unless players need a rest or we need to rotate. So, um, you know, when we've got that problem, we'll we'll um, we'll get to the bottom of it. Callum Cook finally. Yeah, he's he's you know hopefully next week or so. Um, but again, we'll have to um, we'll have to sort of build him up to get back into to contention with the games. You mentioned Anthony as well. Um, I've often described him as, as Mr. Versatile throughout this season. He's played a number of positions and has really stepped up whenever asked upon. Um, his goal at the weekend and his performance has, has brought the whole contract talk negotiations and whatnot back to the floor. I mean, when is the right time to have those discussions? Have they happened already? I think um, a little bit like what, what Ant said himself regarding um, there's, there's maybe more important things to think about at this moment in time. and. And um, you know when we do have that conversation, we'll we'll have clarity on on what's next for the for the club and Ant. Is it a case then of just waiting until the season is over before you even start thinking about having those discussions with not only Anthony O'Connor but the rest of the players that are out of a contract in summer? Um, I think it's it's more individualised on on you know who needs what at certain times and things like that. In, you know in terms of the contracts, um, but again, I don't think there's any time. On it, it's just when we feel it's right and you know when we have them conversations to make them happen. Do you and Mark have a, a good idea of, of who you want to keep and, and who you're going to let go this summer? Obviously, it's really important to see um, how we end the season. Um, again, we're still getting to know all the players and, and starting to, to you know delve deeper into their personalities and their abilities. So 
um, you know, we've not made any decisions because if we had, we'd have um, had the contract sorted, I guess. Um, away from the contract talks um, and more on the playing side of things, um, I wanted to ask you about uh, Vernon and Crankshaw, obviously on the bench for the last few games. I know we've spoken about squad rotation throughout this season. Um, is it likely to expect them return to the starting eleven? Uh, potentially. Um, you know, we've got a lot of options behind the front man with the with the three. Um, and again, you know, players like Keen have shown that, you know, even though they're a centre midfielder, that they can play in that position as, as well as uh, Billy Clark and, and Evo. So um, there's a lot of options in there. And again, it might be in different games we play out and out wingers or some games we play sort of inverted wingers uh, to play in the pocket. So again, you know, really ta talented players. And, you know, if they don't start, you know, they, they do make an impact with their energy and pace when they come on. Um, finally, on, on that front, I wanted to just ask you about Jordan Stevens, um, someone who is, I think it's fair to say, in the bracket of out and out winger. Um, limited game time, it's probably fair to say. Why is that the case? Again, I think it's just with the um, the options that we have got, um, you know, and it's it, there's a lot of conversa difficult conversations with with the players because you know we found um, playing more midfielders in them areas does help. I mean us in certain games and you know with Jordan he's, he's gonna have to you know keep adapting his game and keep um, and keep being patient and training hard to make sure when he does get that opportunity again because it is a is a, a long season um, where people will get injured and things like that and we might have to rotate where he's got to come in and, and take his chance again but again he's he's a great player he's got lots of abilities it's just there's so many options in that area uh, final point from me um, it was something that came up again with, with Niall only a few moments ago, um, the, the long throw of Clayton Donaldson, um, which is something that we've seen introduced uh, of late, and he referenced the fact that you've almost been chasing Cheltenham in terms of uh, the teams that you've been coming up against of late. Is, is it something that you've analysed, and is it something that you're looking to try and build upon? Um, I think it's, you know, you, you analyse your game on, um, you know, what what do we do from throw-ins in the past where it has been high? Have we? What's our success rate? Have we got crosses into the box? Have we got players, maybe our strikers, pinning their centre-halves in the box or got shots away? And, and we probably didn't feel that we created much from, from attacking throw-ins around that area. So, um, you know, when you've got people who can <laughs> can throw it in the box like that, it's like a corner. So, you know, for us, why not use it? Um, and hopefully it can pen them in and keep them there. And it obviously lets your centre-halves and your and your aerial threats go and attack the ball and, and maybe even get a second phase. And I think one of the games we, we scored from a second phase of a, of a long throw-in. So, um, again, if, if it's a weapon, why not use it? Is Clayton the only one that's got that in his, his locker or is someone else in the squad able to throw it as far? Uh, there's, there's two or three. I think Clayton probably throws it the furthest, but uh, there's two or three uh, who've got it as well. Go well tomorrow, Connor. Thank you. Cheers. Hi, Connor. Hi there. Look, you said that it's been a bit of a whirlwind since that last Crawley game back in December. Has that almost been beneficial for you and Mark in that you haven't had time to, to really think about the job you've taken on? It, it's all been about the next match every time. Um, it's, it's probably hard to say. Um, again, it's just it's the lightest life right now and you're just living it. Um, I, I guess we, you know, it's not too different in terms of the roles that you're doing you, you're out on the grass every day coaching players um obviously on a, on a bigger level now with with older players um but I, I guess nothing too much has, has changed you know unlike the um maybe the time that you're working and and all hours and traveling to away games and and things like that and obviously it, it's a, a totally different thing now that you're up against with being three points off the playoffs rather than just trying to stay in, in League Two. Does that pressure feel different to you or, or is it just exactly the same? Um, f for me personally, it's just the same. Again, we, we approach every game um, the same way in terms of the preparation and things like that. So I, I don't think it's healthy to maybe think too much about it. Again, we're not focused on too much in the future. It's it's the game in front of you that you've got to go and, and do your best to win in. So it is still just one game at a time and you're not really looking at the table that much? You know, you always look at the table as, as staff and players because it's it's interesting to see 
how other teams fit and, and what you maybe potentially could do and maybe areas that you need to to get better in. So, um, But for us, you can only take one game at a time. If you look too far ahead, um, you don't focus enough on, on the game that's most important and that's the next one. OK, thanks very much. Good luck tomorrow night. Cheers, thank you. Hi, Connor. Hi there. You, know, you, you were saying, obviously, going back to that Crawley game, I mean, you know... Can you sort of remember what, what what did it feel like at the time? Was it a case of you, we were just sort of thinking of that one game and nothing beyond that? I mean, because presumably at the time you didn't know how long or how short your your spell in charge would be. Yeah, it was it was again it was a quick turnaround where we had to um, identify how we wanted to play and which players were going to play in the game against Crawley and, and who was available. Um, again, it was just it was just kind of relentless in 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 the hours that we were working to try and um, analyse Crawley as much as possible and, and see how we felt we could um, support the players to to um, perform. I was going to say, you talk about the, the hours, I mean, in terms of the time scale, the fact that you then had to travel to Sussex for a Tuesday night game, I mean, there was, there was literally no no breathing space or what was there between being asked if you'd take charge to, to the game itself. Yeah, it was. It, it, it was a crazy, and you know, it is. It's a crazy season because there's so many games. Um, but you know, looking back, I just remember, um, yeah, that it was just relentless, and, you, and you, there was work to do, and you had to do it. And you know, you having so much passion to do the job was was brilliant as well. And I mean, you know, if it's possible, you, from yourself now, from where you were four months ago, what, what, what do you think you've learned as a, as a pair in that time? Because obviously you, you've been through quite a lot in a very short space of time. No, I think it's just you know a fantastic experience of of coming up against managers in in League Two who've who've had you know fantastic careers and and had a lot of uh, time in the game. Um, you know, it's been fantastic working with with a lot of new players from you know different backgrounds and things like that so I think along the way you, you pick up little things that you add to your to your overall um, abilities and and again you start to to understand what you what you feel is right and and you know you're strong in your beliefs but again it's it's been a, a good journey so far and look we're looking forward to to the future as well and I know we've touched on it before but I mean how important has it been that the players you know bought into it right from the start because there, there was no time to sort of bed in was there not not really no we again it was just like us where we just all wanted to crack on it was um the club was in a, a point where we you know they weren't where where they should be uh, in terms of the league table and the form so everybody just wanted to put that right and, and obviously you know you, you mentioned earlier about Lee Novak hopefully getting back this season I think you know. We again, we've spoken about it before, but he he was such a key part of that right at the beginning, wasn't he? I mean, he scored some big goals around that that time in those early games. Yeah, you're right. He did um, some really good performances from the team, and and you know, Lee had some some fantastic goals. And it's just unfortunate we've missed him for for quite a lot of a, a lot of time now. Um, you know, we we're hopefully getting back before the end of the season. Brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, city.